Hi, this is Pat Grady of Embellishing Bliss. Welcome to week five of Navigate the Journey. Last week we spent the week talking about transform. One of my favorite topics, the idea of being able to take something old and recreate it into something new, whether it be something physical or even an idea or a concept. We spent a lot of time on the conference call last week, and if you haven't had a chance to review it, I really highly recommend it. We spent some time talking about the difference between change and transform, and how change makes you feel a little anxious and not necessarily real good about the change that's going to happen. On the other hand, transform is something that's a little gentler. You have an opportunity to say and do what you want to as opposed to having it dictated to you. This week our topic is renew. And when I think of renew, I just take a big, wonderful, deep breath and think about oh, springtime. When I think of uh, a beautiful spring day and it's bright and sunny and we're starting to get little peaks of vegetation coming up and the greenery and we're going from a black and white world here in Minnesota to something in full color and you can just you can hear the birds singing all of our senses just explode because it is a time of renewal and refreshment and so this week, that's what we're going to be talking about with Renew. How do we look at things differently? Um, I'm going to give you an example of Renew that I'm going to do this week, and it is probably not what you consider life-changing. But I want to explain how, with this process, I'm going to be using all of the steps that we've talked about in this course so far. And what I'm going to be doing is again not glamorous but it came to mind today as I was changing the sheets on our bed and I went to my linen closet and it basically exploded on me. There is just so many things in there that I can't hardly open or close the doors anymore without things falling out. And so tomorrow night I am going to be cleaning my linen closet. And you might be thinking, Pat, what does this have to do with anything? But I'm let you know you have to bear with me. I'll explain. First of all, I'm already anticipating cleaning my closet. And some of you might say, you know, I don't know if I'd be anticipating it. I'd be more dreading it. But think about it this way. I'm already anticipating how great it's going to be when I'm finished cleaning the closet and I can open the doors and shut them without things falling out. So that's the anticipation piece of it. The next piece is release. That was from week two. And I've already decided that I'm willing to release some of the things that are in that closet. You know, they have seen better days and they need to move on to a different home. I've already got a charity um, pickup that's coming on Tuesday morning. And so I already know that I'm going to be releasing some of those things in, those, in the closet and letting them go to somebody else that might be able to make better use of them than I have. Then step three is reclaim. I do know that there are a lot of things in that linen closet that I am going to reclaim. My mom was amazing with making quilts and so I have a lot of her quilts that are going to be stacked very neatly back into the closet. But there are some things from her that she did embroidery on uh, like dresser scarves and things like that that I don't use them the way they are currently. but. I think I could take those and transform them into something, whether it be artwork or a pillow or something that I'll actually wear, that's going to do me more good than just kind of cluttering up my linen closet. And then step five, which is what our week is this week, is renew. The whole idea that my closet is going to be clean and renewed and everything organized is just, ah. Oh, a great feeling. So you can see how something just very simple like cleaning your t closet can actually use all the steps that we have ta um, talked about on this course so far. Of course it can be used for much deeper more inner journeys but I just wanted to give you an example of the different ways that it can be used. So um, take a look at your home play for this week. We'll talk more about Renew. Um, our conference call this week will be on Friday from noon to one central time. So now I want to show you um, 
how I'm going to actually paint the cover of the journal. Now I know some of you are probably not ready to do this yet, but I wanted to be able to show you that during this course. And I've been working in this journal and it's uh, over halfway full, so I'm really anxious to transform the outer part of my journal into something that is really going to reflect me. So I'm going to go ahead and um, show you what I've started so far. Okay, the book itself is still black. I'm going to paint that in just a minute and I'll show you how to do it. But I decided that I was going to name this journal Navigate. And part of that is because of this course. This has been um, life changing for me and has been very, very important. And I wanted to um, kind of celebrate that significance by naming this journal Navigate. So what I did is I found my resource materials and each one of the letters is cut out of something that has significance. This first one has some dollar signs on it um, because I have been struggling with money and, and how to make money, how to save money, how to budget money, all different sorts of things. So that's, and I talk a lot about it in my journal so therefore I wanted it to be part of the cover. The next one, the A, is cut out of um, an invitation that I used when I was first starting this coursework. So that has meaning to me. The V is made out of um, a map. Actually, it's a map of Iowa. Um, the I, uh, there is the word giving. And um, I really feel it's important for me to give to others, and whether it's in encouragement or inspiration. So giving is part of this. The G is actually cut out of um, our re weekly uh, church bulletin and it's actually a photograph of me um, praying. So prayer has been more of an important piece of my world lately and so that is um, incorporated. The A is cut out of um, oh, color swatches that I got at Home Depot or something like that because color is such an important part of my life. The T is made from a thank you note that I got from a friend of mine that she actually made this uh, with fabric that she had dyed. And then the E is cut out of, because fabric is so important to me, out of um, a piece of my swimsuit cover up from when I was in high school. So this is the word navigate. Now I'm going to take these letters off of here for now. We'll be applying them shortly, but I wanted to show you how I'm actually going to paint the cover. And typically I've used just my little squirt bottles, which you can certainly use on the cover, but um, for some reason this time I really felt like I wanted to have um, more metallic paints. So these paints are a little more metallic in nature. So I'm just going to put a little bit on here, and again, I'm going to use um, my credit card to put it on to smear it around. And I'm this using this teal color, and I wanted it to kind of go in this angle of how I want the letters to be, so that this will be kind of a background color for that. And again, smoothing it out, um, I'm going to go ahead and in here, and I can go back in, I mean, I, and not just use just the credit card, but I'm going to grab um, a brush here because this paint is kind of getting a little bit thick in that area and I'm able to move it around. Okay, so I've got that one layer here. Next, I'm going to add a little bit of, of course, purple. Got to have a little purple. And I like the idea of blending these two colors together. And really, I have no idea exactly how this is going to turn out, and I'm okay with that. And I'm just getting the paint moved around as much as I can. 
Now I want to add some of this kind of a sort of a, a coppery orangey color. Not quite sure why I came up with this color scheme, but it just seemed like what I was feeling like today. And you can, uh, because this cover of mine has fabric on it, it does take the paint pretty well. Sometimes if it is um, too slippery, the paint may not want to stick to it. And if that's the case, you might want to take like a little piece of sandpaper or something and rough up the texture of it be before you start painting it. Okay, now I've moved this paint around quite a bit. There are some areas I don't really want. I mean, it's okay if some of the black shows through, um, but I don't want a lot of that. So I'm just trying to make sure I move the paint around to cover up those areas. There, now. So this is kind of where we're at so far. You can see that um, there is quite a bit of paint in these areas like that. And some have no paint and some have more. So I'm just using this brush to kind of move it around on the back. Now I want to try something. I have this, um, it's a roller that um, it, you can use for stamping. I don't know if this is going to do anything, but I'm just thinking that it might kind of create a texture so that this will look a little more cohesive so that I'm going to roll over all the colors and it's just making kind of a fun texture on the whole book. Okay. Whoops. I'm going to flip it over to this side. Do the same thing again. And remember, this is just the first base coat, so I can always go back in and touch up later, and I'll probably add more paint over, but this is kind of the base color. All right, now, even while this is still a little wet, it's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and start to line up my letters of Navigate. And I'll position them somewhat like I like them. And actually, I think I'm going to turn this book around. I had it facing this way. Here, I'll show you what it looks like. But now I'm going to turn it around so that I can see it, so that it um, makes more sense to me. And I'm going to use my um, glue stick to get the letters in place and then I'm going to use a Mod Podge over top of it which I'll show you that in a minute. It's a material that you can get at an uh, art supply store and I, you know it's almost like doing decoupage if you remember that from in the 70s. Okay so I'm getting these letters down with um, that say navigate. And this is just the regular glue stick. Um, I found that it helps to have the letters down with this first before the Mod Podge. It seems to hold it in place and then the Mod Podge kind of seals it all in.
and I don't know what else I'm going to add to this after I'm done with it if I want to add more paint. Um, next week I'll show you how to actually do the button closure um, because this will be wet. Once I put the Mod Podge on here I'm not going to want to mess with it. But next week um, I will show you how to do a button closure so that if you're like me and tend to fill your book pretty full, it's a way to keep it together so that you don't have things falling out and um, it holds everything in place. All right, we're getting close here. And there's nothing saying that you have to name your journal. I mean, you could simply paint it. You don't have to have words on it. My first journal, I don't think I hit, put any words on it. The second one, I painted some letters on it. Um, not really sure why I decided to do this this time. It's just like it felt right to me. And it's really about doing what you want to do. This is your book. You get to choose. Um, how it's going to help to say what you want to say about it. And it was funny, I was thinking about as I was designing this, that when this book is closed and you see the front of the book, it will actually have the word gate on the front of it. And I actually kind of like that. You know, like this could be the gateway, you know, to discovering something new. So I'm okay with the word gate being on the front of this book. Okay, now I have all of the letters on. So you can see what this looks like. The next thing I'm going to do, and I think long term I will probably put some more paint and other things over it, but right now I want to put some Mod Podge on here basically to seal these letters. It kind of does a nice finish and I will probably do more paint over the top. And um, this is what the Mod Podge looks like and it is, um, I use the matte finish. And it's basically, it's almost like a, an Elmer's glue kind of material. And I can paint it directly over top of all the letters. And it really just sort of seals them in. So I'm painting over all of these. Um, this particular letter has some yarn and some other fuzzy sorts of things in there. And so they'll be stiffer than what they were originally, but I think it's that's okay with me because I want them to um, stay there and not tear out or anything. And this is a water-based um, product, so you can just wash your brush out with warm water afterwards. You don't have to use any kind of a a thick or uh, like a uh, lacquer base to do that and it typically works fine and doesn't smear at least so far I haven't found that it's smearing any of these inks or anything right now I am just going over the letters but um, I think I'm going to want this whole book to have um, a similar feel to it, so I will probably Mod Podge the entire book so I have the same kind of a finish on it. And then I'll add, I don't know if I'll add more fabric or um, paint. After this dries, I'll probably take a look at it tomorrow and decide what else it needs and I'll be maybe adding some things through the week so next week uh, when I do the video you'll be able to see how it's changed from this week 
and uh, but I will wait to show how I put the button closure on till next week so I can actually demonstrate that for you. And this may, um, I'm not sure, but you may be able to see some of the, the brush strokes from this when I'm done. I don't know. I'm okay if you can. It's not a huge deal. Part of the idea is that you have to be willing to see what happens and, and not worry too much about it being absolutely perfect. For me, whatever it is, it is. I'm just excited that it's going to be something other than black. It's been black for so long. Okay. We're almost finished. All right. Here you go. This is what it looks like. I am going to just put a little more of the Mod Podge right down the back spine. And I'm just going to leave it probably stand up like this to go ahead and dry for the night. So have a great week. Have some fun. Try to renew. And remember the conference call is on Friday this, this week from noon to 1 o'clock Central Time. Bye now. Have a great week.